This is part three of the Bitrix 24 instructional videos for the SnafuCon staff. In this video, I will be going over each field in the task and task templates in detail. Most of the options are intuitive, but some aren't, so this is worth going over. If you feel you have a good handle on creating tasks, you can skip this video for now, but please do watch it at some point because it covers some items which are not intuitive in the slightest. Also, don't worry too much if you don't remember what all the fields are right away. So really quick, in both of the task templates and the tasks, you have these little pins on the right hand side so that different fields that you access regularly, you can pin to the top so you don't have to keep clicking more to access them. Since I'm prioritizing task templates, I am going to start there. So open a task template by going to Tasks, Template button, All Templates, and either edit one of your templates or click Add Template. So up at the top, you have the title and descriptions of your task. The description is a free text field with some basic WYSIWYG formatting. You can bring up the WYSIWYG for the description in the lower right hand corner here. Try to include details about what the task is and how to complete it. I like to use this area to link to the wiki if there is a wiki entry for this task. You can add a checklist to your task by clicking checklist. Enter your items and click add for each item. You can move them around by just clicking and dragging them. You can edit by clicking the pencil, which only appears when you hover. And you can delete them by clicking the X, which also only appears when you hover. You can also apparently mark them as completed, so I guess when your task is generated, it's already partway done. Yay? Other things you can do with the description are add a mention of another person on the staff. You can quote text. And you can add a link. This icon here allows you to attach files to the template. You can upload files directly to the template. You can download them from an external drive. You can create a new document. But something I find particularly valuable is this section here where you can select a document that's already in Bitrix 24. Do keep in mind that we tend to have different versions of files for each year, so be careful not to link to a file in a template that will become obsolete after con. Another feature up here at the top is this high priority. It's strictly a visual feature. All it does is change a little box to red or shows the little flame. That could be really useful depending on how you want to organize your tasks. The responsible person is exactly that. Is it you? Is it someone else? Who is responsible for the completion of this task? Most often it's going to be you, unless you're a manager assigning tasks to other people. There is only one responsible person per task entity. If you add two people here, the template will create two completely independent tasks that people will be separately responsible for. It does try to warn you that a separate task will be created for each responsible person, but I have seen times where this window just doesn't pop up. So just keep that in mind. One responsible person per task. This is something that's going to be very rarely used, but it is useful for things such as review RT for new tickets, which is something you'd want several people to be doing regularly and independently of each other. The creator is generally going to be you. I'm not even sure non-admin can change the creator, but even if you can, you probably shouldn't mess with this unless you have a very good reason. Participants are people who can also work on this task. They can mark it complete, they can discuss it in the task's comments, and they receive updates on the changes and progress of the task. You generally want to put anyone who has anything to do with completing this task in the participants list. Observers are people who generally aren't going to be doing things on the task, but should be able to access and see the task's progress. They also can comment and discuss the task. If you're setting up a task for a subordinate that you won't actually be doing anything for, then you probably want yourself and your co-head set as observers. You can put the same person in multiple fields. There is no limitation as to who can be where. All this really affects is the different menus that these tasks show up on, and I'll cover that in another video. So deadline in is how many days after the creation of the task that the task will be due. What this does is when the template generates a task, it will automatically set a due date for you based on the day it generated the task itself, whether it was automatically generated by the system or manually generated by you. You can set this as a rather high number if the task is generating early in the year and you want that task around for a while. Or you can set it to a few days if it's more urgent. You can also leave it blank, but I strongly recommend setting a rough due date. You can always change it later when the task is generated. You can also now change days to hours or minutes, but I doubt any of us will be creating tasks that need to be done within hours of creation. If you click on time planning, you have a couple of fields pop out. Start task in and duration. These are purely visual fields that you can set up if you like using the Gantt chart view. I never use them, but if you use Gantt charts, it's probably a great thing to mess with. If you click options, you have a few more fields that pop out. Responsible person may change the deadline means exactly that. 
I like to leave it clicked, otherwise only the creator or an admin can change that due date. However, there are many times I've forgotten because it's hidden behind that options link. Skip weekends and holidays doesn't really make sense for us because a lot of us do most of our work on the weekends, so you're not going to want to check that box. Approved task when completed is best used for tasks that you need to review before completion. When the responsible person tries to finish a task, it's left open for the creator to review. Once you've reviewed it, you can either finish it or kick it back to them to complete. I rarely use this feature, but it would work best for anything that takes a lot of review to complete, such as graphics or letter writing, or something that the user is currently in training for. And last, there's task template for a new employee. If you click this, you'll see the responsible person disappear and it will say new user. I'm not sure non-admin have this option, but it would make this template create a new task whenever a new employee joins the internet. Of course, we don't have employees, but it's the same concept. You'll notice that it's not checkable. That's because I opened a previously started template. This is only checkable for new templates and it is not something you can set for recurring tasks. For project, this is where you want to assign it to a specific work group. Click on add and if your departmental work group doesn't show up, you can search for it. If you're missing yours, please ask the admin to create it. Project and work group means exactly the same thing in Bitrix 24. The CRM field is only really useful if you're using the CRM. Some people will need this, but most won't. You can click select to link this template and therefore the task it creates to either a company or a contact. Custom fields are exactly that. I'm not sure if non-admin can create custom fields, but once we start using them, they'll work throughout all the tasks. So if you have a custom field you want on all of your tasks, you can either set that up here or ask an admin to set it up for you. However, after using Bitrix for a while, I've not yet seen a need for a custom field. So I expect our custom field list is going to grow very slowly, if at all. If you click this gear to the right, there's an option that says set field set to all users. It means that this field will be set up for all users. If it's not selected, then any custom fields are for you alone. As long as you don't have a base template assigned, you can click the checkbox next to repeat tasks and set up the recurring settings. This particular template, I had already set up as a recurring task in the previous video, so it's already activated. If you're setting up a roadmap of your annual tasks, you can set them up as early as November so that the following year's tasks generate and you can review and update right after con. If you click task planned time, a couple of other options pop out. You've got hours and minutes. This allows you to set time planning on your task. So time tracking is a really useful feature that I personally never use. What it does is it creates a little timer. So when you're working on a task, you can start work, pause work, or end work on that task to determine how long it takes you to do something. If you think you can remember to track your time, I strongly recommend turning this on because it can be valuable information. I found that I couldn't remember to time what I was doing and I tend to jump around between tasks or walk away randomly, so it just doesn't work for me. Tags are what tags are. To my knowledge, they work the same as tags anywhere else on the web, and they work outside the scope of work groups. So theoretically, they would allow for easier searching and filtering. The one time I tried using tags and I tried searching on it, it found no results. So I'm not entirely sure that their search box currently connects to the tags. Next, we have dependent tasks. I'll explain this more in the task creation. This is not something I would recommend setting up on a template because it links to specific tasks and not other templates. Next, we have subtask. Subtask is actually short for subtask of, which means this template is a subtask of another template or task. Notice that task is already highlighted and I can't click on template. I strongly do not recommend setting a template as a subtask of another task. So if you want to use the subtask feature with a template, you're going to want to have it be a subtask of a template. The only way to do that is to not have it be a recurring task. If I go and I unclick activate next to repeat task, I can now select template. And now I have actual templates that I can make this a sub template of. The reason it can't be a sub-template if it's recurring is because only the base template is recurring. So over here I have a bunch of templates that have sub-templates for cosplay. Each one of the base templates is set up as recurring and each one of the sub-templates is not. So whenever the base template creates a task, all of those sub-templates are created at the same time. And last we have access permissions. It's automatically set up as full access for you. If you want other people to be able to edit and update your template, you're going to want to add other people to this access list. These could be people that are set up as observers, participants, other department heads. They don't have to be related to the task whatsoever to be allowed to access the template. And you can set people up so that they can only read your template instead of actually being able to change it. And that's it. If you are creating a new task template, you click Create Task Template. Or if you're editing a task template, you click Save Changes. 
And here is my edited task template. So you can add a subtask from this window just by clicking on add subtask in the upper right hand corner. And you'll notice you'll already have the base template set. Once you have a template created, you've got a couple of options under more where you can create the task based on that template. You can add a sub template to it, which you can also do in the upper right hand corner. You can copy the template so that you can make a very similar template based on this template. Or you can delete it, which is what I'm going to do now because this is a useless template. So now I'm going to go over all of these fields in the task screen. Most of the fields are the same, some of them are kind of different. We've still got the title, we've still got a description, we've still got our high priority. All of these are the same, so you can add a checklist, it works the same way. Mention, quote, link, or file. Attaching a file to a task makes a little more sense than attaching it to a template, and you still have the option to do it from Bitrix or from another service or upload it directly. The responsible person is the same, it works the same way, you can only have one responsible person. If you add two people here, it'll create two different tasks. Created by should be you. Observers is people who aren't likely to be doing anything on the task, but want to keep up with what's going on. Participants are people who are likely to be doing something on the task. The deadline is a specific date for the task, unlike in the template where it gives you a certain amount of days. Now you can set an actual date that this task is due. If you click time planning, you can set up the Gantt chart options for when the task should be started, when it should be finished, under options, we have a few more checkboxes than we had in the template. Responsible person can change deadline, same thing. Skip weekends and holidays, pretty useless for us. Approve task when completed, have it thrown back to you. Add to favorites. So favorites is just one of our task list menu items and I'll go over those later. It's really easy to remove and add tasks from your favorites, but you can do it right here in the task creation screen. Add to working day plan allows you to add this task to your current I am planning on doing these tasks today list. That task is up here under the clock and it allows you to access specific tasks more easily no matter where you are in Bitrix. Derive task dates from subtask dates is a brand new field to me that I have not played with. This looks like a really useful option so that you don't have to set your start and end dates. It just calculates them based on whatever subtasks you have. So if this is a base task and it has a bunch of subtemplates, this will set the start and end for you on the Gantt chart. Autocomplete tasks when all subtasks are completed is another brand new field for me. But it looks like if you have a bunch of subtasks and you complete them all, it will automatically mark the parent task as complete. And if you mark that parent task as complete, it will automatically complete all of the subtasks. So that could be a time saver. I have project pinned as one of the things I like to see most frequently. If you click on it, this is just work groups. Same as the template, project and work group mean exactly the same thing. Time tracking is the same as the template. It's a really useful field if you can remember to use it. Remind about this task will send either messenger or email notifications to the responsible person on the task, the creator, or to you. You can only create one type of reminder at a time, but you can create an unlimited quantity. Email is useful, but if the person you're reminding uses Bitrix regularly, as they should, then the messenger option might be better. If the person you're reminding has the app on their phone, they'll receive their reminders as push notifications. I like to create one email reminder and one messenger reminder that both send at the same time. Repeat task works exactly the same as how it works in the template. You fill out this form, it's going to create a template for you based on how you filled out your task. Gantt add previous task. You can use this to make a better Gantt chart and dependencies. Click this to select what task needs to be done before this task. I asked customer support how multiple tasks work together and I didn't get a good answer. I think the support girl didn't know either. From what I gathered though, this won't actually start tasks but simply lays them out on the Gantt chart for you. I was told there will be more functionality with this at some point in the future. It does list previous tasks when you open the task itself and it shows links together in the Gantt chart task view. The CRM works the same as the template. Click select to attach this task to a company or contact. Subtask of works very similar to how it works in the template, but you can only attach this task as a subtask of another task, not templates, which makes sense, I would hope. It makes the current task a subtask of whatever task you choose. This is really useful for hierarchical organization, and you can collapse subtasks into the base tasks. I like to use subtasks a lot when I can. It makes everything just a lot easier to handle when you have a lot of tasks. Tags in the task work the same as tags in the template. I'm not entirely sure how useful they are. Custom field works exactly the same way as in the template, and I'm not entirely sure we'll be using it. So in the template for dependent tasks, I just kind of glossed over it and said don't use it. However, in tasks, it can be really useful. 
When you select a dependent task, you basically get a list of tasks inside this task. So you can use this to link related tasks together. Think of it like bookmarks. Since there's no logic set on dependent tasks, feel free to link as many tasks to each other as you want. You can even link two tasks to each other so you can more easily navigate between them. If you are editing a task, your choices are save changes or cancel. And if you're entering a new one, you can add task, add task and create another one to rapid create a lot of tasks, or cancel to go back to your task list. And that is the detailed description of all of the fields for tasks and task templates.